In this step, we're going to show you how to install the AS3X receiver in your aircraft. For this particular application, we're going to show the AR636 receiver. However, keep in mind that virtually all the AS3X receivers, the installation process is exactly the same. The first thing that you need to do is decide whether it's appropriate to use a remote receiver. The way to make that decision is, obviously, if you have a large aircraft, if you have a gas or glow powered aircraft, or if you're going to fly your aircraft at great distances, a remote receiver is highly recommended. Of course, a remote receiver simply plugs in the side. In some of these receivers, it's optional. In some of the uh, receivers that have higher channels, it's actually included. So first make that decision based on the type of aircraft that you have. So if you have an aircraft with a lot of conductive material, it's highly recommended that you use a remote receiver. Here we're going to be installing this in a uh, Carbon-Z Yak, and actually it's, it's fine either way. In this case, we're going to install it without the remote, but uh, in any case, this is kind of the middle of the road where you can go either way. So the next thing that's important to understand is it's absolutely vital that this be installed in the correct orientation or position in the aircraft. So keep in mind there are sensors that sense the three axis, roll, pitch, and yaw, and this receiver needs to be um, installed in such a way that it's parallel and perpendicular to those axes. Axis. So also, there are eight possible positions that this receiver can be installed in. So as a rule of thumb, the first thing that you need to do and be aware of is you can install the receiver in the aircraft with the ports facing the front or the ports facing the rear has to be one of the two. You cannot install the receiver with the ports facing the side or up and down. So the servo ports need to be facing front or facing the rear. Now, the second option that you have, if the ports are facing the front, you can install it right side up, you can install it upside down, you can install it on the right side or on the left side. Same thing from the rear. If the pins face the rear, you can install it right side up, upside down, on its side, or on its other side. What's important, however, is when you install it in any of these eight positions, that the faces of the receiver, the flats of the receiver, need to be parallel and perpendicular to the axis. So if I install it like so, the flat portion needs to be parallel to the pitch axis, and the vertical line needs to be parallel in this direction, and then the same thing with yaw. What's important to understand is never install it at an angle. In many aircraft, like the Carbon Z Yak, the receiver is actually installed on, on the bottom side of the airplane. We've turned the airplane over, and of course we've removed the hatch that allows us access to the area where we install the receiver. So the receiver actually comes with a piece of double-sided servo tape, or you know, later on you can use any piece of double-sided servo tape to uh, fasten it in place. So because the receiver has sensors built in, it is absolutely important and vital that the receiver be securely mounted. If the receiver should happen to come undone and you know, float around inside the um, airplane, that could be disastrous. Uh, so very important that you securely mount it in place. Find a place, so basically dry fit and find a place for the receiver to go. So when you're dry fitting the receiver in place before permanently mounting it, you, know, you need to look at your, how your servo leads come in place and be sure they're going to be plenty long enough to be able to get to the ports. And then also remember that this needs to be mounted either pins to the rear, pins to the front, and then one of these eight possible um, positions. In the case of the uh, yak here, there's actually a very nice place for this to sit. I'm going to just dry fit it in position, and you can see it fits nicely there. I'm going to eventually fold this antenna to the back and going to be able to plug my servo leads directly in place. So that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and install my servo tape. I'm going to peel back the servo tape, and making sure that the receiver is squared up with the axis of the airplane. I'm going to go ahead and install the receiver, press it firmly in place, then I'm going to route the antenna here, and I'm going to route this antenna down the side, and I'll end up using a piece of, uh, small piece of tape to fasten that in place. So in the Carbon-Z Yak, it already has a nice platform in order to mount the receiver that is uh, appropriately uh, oriented 
with the, on the axis uh, of the aircraft. In some aircraft, um, you may find that you have to build up an area yourself. You may have to use a piece of balsa wood or uh, various materials, but it's absolutely vital that the receiver be mounted, like we mentioned, perpendicular and parallel in, in one of those eight possible positions. Another important thing to realize is this is an uh, electric airplane and of course it's primarily constructed of foam. So vibration in this airplane is really minimal. And in most cases, even for gas and glow powered aircraft, um, you're going to find that mounting using servo tape or even just a, a, you know, a couple thicknesses of foam is all that's necessary. If you find an application that's a really high vibration level application, of course the first thing you need to do is if possible is get rid of the vibration. Be sure that the prop's balanced, um, you know, be sure that the engine is mounted correctly. You know, at first try to eliminate the vibration. But obviously in some cases, like if you have a large um, displacement, single cylinder um, gas engine, it's going to shake a lot. In those instances, it's a real good idea to mount the receiver in uh, greater thicknesses of foam and you just have to go through trial and error to find out how much it takes. We're going to show later in the video how to actually set up flight modes such that the gyro is completely turned off. The AS3X system is completely turned off and it's safe to fly no matter what the vibration level is and then you can turn it on in flight and if the vibration level in the aircraft is so great that it actually gets into the AX3X system and causes some uh, negative effects, you'll safely be able to flip out of that. So. We'll show you how to do that in one of the future videos.